If I were to ask you what the weirdest racing car ever made was, I reckon a lot of you would have similar answers. Some of you would probably say the six-wheeled Tyrrell, some would say the fan car, and some would probably say the Delta Wing. But I'm here to tell each and every one of you that you are wrong. For the actual weirdest racing car ever made is a Toyota Prius. This is Triple Crown Racing, let's get into it. The Toyota Prius is probably the most hated vehicle among car enthusiasts. It's ugly, it's slow, it claims to be eco-friendly in the most pretentious possible way, when in reality it's about as kind to the environment as nuclear waste. And yet the owners of this ghastly contraption have the audacity to yell at other motorists because their cars aren't eco-friendly enough. I think most of us would happily take to it with a sledgehammer. And yet, back in 2011, someone at Toyota decided it would be the obvious choice of car to go racing with. In December of the same year, Toyota announced that the Prius would be going racing in the 2012 Super GT Championship. A Japanese autosport magazine promptly released renderings of what the Toyota Prius could look like, and they actually weren't that far off. In January of 2012, the Prius GT300 car was on the stands at the Tokyo Auto Salon. Now before I get into the specs of the car, let me just explain some Super GT regs. There are two classes in Super GT. GT500, the fast ones, are cars that are akin to DTM and with the introduction of class 1 regs, they will actually be the same cars as used in DTM, as DTM will be the same as Super GT. GT300 is made up of three types of cars, GT3 cars which race all over the world in many different championships, JAF GT300 cars, which use the road-going equivalent car's original cabin, but effectively have a race car built around them, and mother chassis cars, which are basically just silhouettes built around a spec chassis. The Toyota Prius racing car was, of course, a JAF GT300 car. The car's original engine had been thrown away in favour of a 3.4-litre RV8 KLM V8 engine, the same engine that was being used in the LMP1 TSO30 the same year. It had also been mounted in the middle. The new engine was actually still coupled with the car's original hybrid system, only this time it had a bigger battery. So in reality, the car wasn't even remotely like its row-going counterpart. But hey, it's the coolest this car's ever been, so let's roll with it. And so the Toyota Prius APR GT was born. APR ran the car alongside their Audi R8 LMS Ultra for the 2012 season. You've probably not heard of any of the drivers elected to drive the thing, as neither of the two full season drivers even have a Wikipedia page. Morio Nita joining Koki Saga full time, while Yuchi Nakayama joined the team for the Suzuka 1000. Now, Nakayama actually does have a Wikipedia page. He'd only been racing cars for four years at this point, but he has since achieved quite a lot. But these were the drivers that would be fielding the car. Year one, as to be expected, was tough for the Prius. While it proved itself to be a fast car, qualifying inside the top 10 in its class most of the time, even taking a class pole position at the 300 km race at Fuji Speedway, it was pretty unreliable and retired in half of the races that season. However, when it did finish, the results were quite good. It even took second place at the same race it qualified on pole in. In its first year, the Prius finished 10th in the GT300 standings. 2013 was even better for the team. At the second round of the championship, the Prius took its first race win at the 500km race at Fuji and would go on to take another podium finish yet again at Fuji. The Prius finished 8th in the GT300 standings that year. 2014 would see the Prius finish 8th again with two podium finishes at the Suzuka 1000 and the final race of the season at Motegi. 2015 would see a lineup change for the APR Prius team as Nakayama would now be doing the full season alongside Saga while Kota Sasaki joined the team for the 500km race at Fuji and the Suzuka 1000. It was a great year for the team as the Prius would take two wins, three podiums, seven top tens and finish third in the GT300 standings on 69 points. Nice. The Prius had obviously proven its worth as APR decided to get rid of the underperforming Nissan GTR for the 2016 season. 
Hiroki Nagai and Kota Sasaki would take up driving duties for the number 30, while Nakayama and Saga would drive the number 31. Saga and Nakayama would finish second in the standings with a win, two second places, and fifth being the notable results for that year, while Nagai and Sasaki would finish 24th in the standings. Ouch, I feel bad for Nagai and Sasaki now. Nakayama left the team for the 2017 season, and Rintaro Kubo would take his place. Obviously, Nakayama was an incredibly valuable asset to the team, as it wasn't a very good year for the Prius. The 31 car would finish 15th in the standings, with the highlight of the season being a third place finish at the Fuji 300. The 30 car would finish 25th in the standings, never once finishing in the top 10. 2018 saw Kubo being replaced by Kohai Hirate on the 31 lineup, and it seemed to work as Hirate and Saga finished third in the GC300 standings that year with four podiums. The 30 car would finish 25th, so another lackluster year for the second prize once again. It seemed that the prize, for the most part, had mostly been on the up since it ended Super GT competition in 2012, so surely 2019 would be another strong year for the 31 car at least. Well, you'd be wrong. For 2019, the mid-engine layout that had been used so far was banned. A new engine was also shoehorned into the front of the new generation Prius. This time, it was the 5.4 litre V8 derived from the Lexus RCF GT3 car. There were also some changes to the driver lineup. Nagai was retained on the 30 car, but Sasaki was replaced by Manabu Orido, and Kazuto Kotaka joined the squad for the Fuji 500km and the Fuji 500 mile race. Saga was also retained on the 31 lineup, but Hirate was replaced by Yuki Nakayama. I'm not actually sure if Yuki is related to Yuchi. If someone could check that, that'd be great. Regardless, it was a new car with a new engine layout and new drivers. By the looks of things, due to the sheer amount of stuff that was happening in the APR garage, 2019 didn't go so well. Both cars were also using different hybrid systems and tyres to each other, so that may have contributed to their very different results. The 31 car placed 21st in the standings, and the 30 car placed 2nd to last. Unfortunately, this is the end of the APR prior story for the time being. So far, it's been a mixed bag of results. Perhaps if APR can work the new version of the car out, the Prius may pick up some more wins and maybe even a championship in the new decade. But that's the story so far for the weirdest racing car ever made. And that's going to do it from me. Leave any of your thoughts in the comments below. Follow the TCR Instagram for all the latest and greatest motorsport news. I'm also trying to be more active on Twitter, so it's at Racing Triple for the TCR Twitter. Or if you just want to follow me personally, I'm at Mackenzie Music. Also, we need some new blood on the Discord server, so if you aren't already a part of that, link in the description as well. My goal for 2020 is reaching 200 subscribers by the end of the year, something very special plan if that happens and that is going to do it for me like subscribe and i'll see you next time goodbye